Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be comparing two numbers. 3 to the pi and pi to the power 3. Which number is bigger and why? We're going to be looking at a couple different things, so it's going to be interesting. Let's get started. Now, these two numbers are actually hard to compare as is, don't you think? Well, we do know that pi is greater than 3, right? But does that help? Well, if you have a bigger base, does that mean the number is going to be bigger or is it the other way around? And is it always like that? So a lot of good questions. We're, we're going to try to answer them. But first, let's put this or put these numbers into a nicer form. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and raise both sides to the power 1 over 3 pi. And you'll see why that's helpful. Let's go ahead and do that first. And now I can go ahead and cancel out the same things like pi divided by pi is 1, 3 divided by 3 is 1. So this kind of gives us 3 to the power 1 over 3 and pi to the power 1 over pi. So those are the two numbers that I'm going to be comparing. I will continue with the solution. But before that, I want to show you a graph based on what we have so far. Try to guess what that graph is and how we can use it. And then at the end, I'm going to show you on the graph how we can actually use this to compare these crazy numbers. They're pretty crazy numbers because they are probably irrational, not probably, definitely irrational, and most likely transcendental, a special class of irrational numbers because of pi, right? Anyway, so here's the graph. Take a good look, take a good picture, and then will continue. Okay? Now, so we're going to be looking at two numbers, 3 to the power 1 third and pi to the power 1 over pi. Now, for many reasons, this is much better. First of all, think about it. We had 3 to the power pi. They were different numbers. But this time, the base and the exponent are pretty much related, right? Because whatever the base is, I have something like a, and then the exponent is 1 over a. So, I can kind of think about this in general terms. So let's consider the function f of x equals x to the power 1 over x. Make sense? Now, obviously, 3 to the power 1 over 3 is just going to be the same thing as f of 3. And pi to the power 1 over pi is just going to be f of pi. So we're going to be comparing two outputs of this function. Make sense? But the first question I want to pose is, is this function increasing or decreasing? Again, make a guess, and then we'll verify. Okay? And we're going to use calculus to do that. Let's have some fun with calculus. Don't be scared by the word calculus, by the way. It's not some big fancy thing. It's actually looking at the rate of growth of a function and or rate of change of a function, I should say, because it could be a decline too. So it gives us a lot of good information. It's very practical and obviously physics, right? Uses calculus a great deal. So that's our gift to physicists. Anyways, so we're going to take this function and write it a little differently so I can or we can differentiate it. Let's go ahead and write it as e to the power ln x to the power 1 over x. As you hopefully know, when you have something like t, you can write it as e to the power ln t. So this allows us to get rid of this weird form, which is a variable to a variable situation because we don't really have rules for their derivatives, right? So I'm going to go ahead and now simplify this. Bring the 1 over x to the front so we can write it as e to the power of 1 over x times ln x. If you don't like product rule or if you, wanna de if you don't want to deal with fractions, let's write it as a quotient, which is, I think, simpler, okay? Now, this is my function, and notice that it's e to the power something, so that's kind of exponential, right? So, differentiate it. We can differentiate it very easily. What is the rule for e to the u? e to the u times u prime. Remember, chain rule gives us the derivative of the inside, which is the derivative of ln x over x, and that is going to be the quotient rule. The derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x, multiply by x, minus the derivative of x, which is 1, times ln x. And of course, there should be a division sign. So let me go ahead and I forgot to make it a fraction. And of course, we're going to divide this by the denominator 
I mean, not the denominator. It's going to be the denominator, but it comes from uh, x squared. Okay? It's actually denominator, isn't it? So now let's simplify this a little bit. And now we get f prime. And if you want to convert this back, that's totally fine. You can write it as x to the power 1 over x multiplied by 1 minus ln x divided by x squared. And of course, you can combine these, but there's no need because all we have to do is set it equal to 0. Now, notice that x to the power 1 over x cannot be 0. Wait a minute. Is that not possible at all? What if x equals 0? Well, if x is 0, then 1 over 0 is undefined. Well, we just briefly, you know, recently talked about 0 to the power 0 being something, right? I'm not going to say it. I don't want to spoil the surprise. But we kind of talked about it. But this is different because it's kind of like 0 to the power 1 over 0. And 1 over 0 is definitely absolutely undefined, okay? It's not, it's infinity, but what is 0 to the power infinity, right? That's undefined. Okay, anyways. So now let's go ahead and see what we can do. This can't be 0. This can't be 0. No, no way. So this has to be 0. 1 minus ln x equals 0 implies ln x equals 1. And that implies x equals e. Euler's number, yay. Awesome. Let's go ahead and make a table uh, with this information. So I'm going to have a row for x for f prime and f and the root is e for the derivative which means now take a look at this this is the only thing that changes sign so if x is greater than e like e squared uh, then 1 minus ln x is going to be negative which means the derivative is going to be negative so we have a negative sign here and a positive sign here which means our graph is going to be increasing and then decreasing which means we have a max at x equals e. Make sense? And f of e is e to the power 1 over e. So what is that supposed to mean? Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph because on the graph things are going to make much more sense. Okay? All right. Great. So the graph that I showed you at the very beginning, that belonged to f of x equals x to the power 1 over x. And remember what I told you. 3 to the power 1 over 3 was f of 3, and pi to the power 1 over pi was f of pi. So those are the two values we're going to compare because we simplified it. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at that graph one more time. Notice that this graph has a max at e, so this is going to be x equals e, which is about 2.7-ish, right, between 2 and 3, but closer to 3. And then our numbers are, we're looking at two values. One of them is f of 3, which is right here. And the other one is f of pi, which is somewhere here. I don't know exactly, but something like that. But notice that since our function made a max at e, it's going to start dropping. You don't see that dramatic drop because of the zoom level, but it is going to decrease 0, I mean e to infinity. It's going to decrease on that interval, right? e to infinity. Great. So, which means the y value at pi, which is pi to the power, pi to the power 1 over pi, is going to be smaller than e to the power 1 over e. Make sense? So, if you go ahead and power both, wait a minute, where does the e come from? Okay, it's supposed to be a 3, sorry about that. So, the 3, the value at pi is going to be less than, because the function is decreasing, 3 to the power 1 over 3. So that means this number is going to be larger. Yeah, 3 to the power something is a winner, which means 3 to the power pi is bigger. And of course, it's 31.5443 approximately, and the other one is close to 31. So they're pretty close, and you can see the ratio is about 1.7%. Right? And this brings us, I mean, 101 point. You get the idea. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.